you find a mid diastolic murmur even in aortic regurgitation what is that called what is that called valvular heart disease doctor tips me then what is graham still what is austin flint austin flint is severe aortic regurgitation mein kya hota aorta se piche blood is falling down into ventricle ventricle pushed blood into aorta but aortic blood is coming back during that time what is ventricle doing ventricle is relaxing and atrium is filling it so atrium to ventricle is moving forward and from aorta to ventricle it is coming backward both will clash and that lead to resistance to the forward flow which lead to mid diastolic rumble nobody understood understood na huh? that is called austin flint minor degrees of aortic regurgitation no austin flint only when aortic regurgitation is severe when the aorta is raining strongly into the ventricle then only from atrium to ventricle blood flow will get resistance from that backward flow hence austin flint is a marker of the most severe aortic regurgitation is what you have to remember even atrial myxoma why do you hear mid diastolic murmur when the left atrium pushing blood into the ventricle and ventricle is undergoing diastole this myxoma is offering resistance hence mdm why mitral stenosis same problem why aortic regurgitation backward flow from the aorta is causing resistance to the forward flow from atrium into ventricle when the ventricle is getting filled and diastole is what need to be understood one more diastolic murmur you need to remember is caricom what is caricom when there is an acute rheumatic fever there is a myocarditis which lead to dilatation of the chamber that will widen the mitral valve ring that lead to temporary regurgitation which lead to diastolic murmur only until acute carditis is there that is called caricom okay and even caricom is also an example of a mid diastolic murmur in acute rheumatic carditis is what need to be remembered what is the general rule doctor <clears throat> general rule is the voice not clear vizac says voice is breaking maybe you need to change settings here voice is not clear varangal poor network is slow there but uh, you need to i am speaking low voice no you may need to raise the pitch dr varun says it is clear vaisag is okay varangal is breaking आउट लगा हा बिफोर अगेन माय लैरिंजाइटिक टोन इनटू नॉर्मल टोन नीट विल बी ओवर दैट्स होल ऑफ माय वरी सो बट एनीवे वील यूज लो पिच एटलीस्ट फॉर द नेक्स्ट बैच ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स वी नीड टू प्रिजर्व सम वॉइस yeah sikindrabad says okay what is the rule in valvular heart disease all stenotic valvular heart disease will worsen with pregnancy all regurgitant valvular heart diseases will improve why in pregnancy there is a high progesterone which relaxes the smooth muscles of the vessels which lead to vasodilatation 
if there is a vasodilatation how is the total peripheral resistance decreases when the total peripheral resistance decreases regurgitant lesions will become less regurgitant but what will happen to stenotic lesions vasodilatation increases the preload increased preload will make more blood to travel through a narrow stenotic valve hence stenotic lesions worsen regurgitant lesions improve whenever there is pregnancy is what you have to ultimately remember Lone Genong Levine syndrome. Have you heard it? No. Wolf Parkinson White, you have heard it. It is the younger sister of Wolf Parkinson White. What is the difference? In both the situations, AV node is bypassed. So that atria directly conduct impulses into ventricles. AV node is responsible for what? in the ECG PR interval PR interval P means what atrial contraction QRS is ventricle between the two there is a delay why because AV node will slow down the passage of the electrical activity from atrium into ventricle so if there is a bypass tract what will it do AV node is bypassed so PR interval become shorter but in case of uh, uh, what you call wolf parkinson white additionally there is also pre excitation syndrome if you look at the qrs complex the delta wave is there no that is a feature of wolf parkinson white but not long genong levin there is a difference but both of them will lead to shortening of the pr interval is the point of interest here all these things are uh, ultimately we decided that the preparation required is only 250 hours of 12,000 questions which is available as a video for you you can go there is a theory and MCQ discussion do not go to theory MCQ discussion part whichever lecture you want you can fast forward slow down and then review all previous questions we have discussed in that you will get the you can use you can take the username password we will give it free for the next uh, two months for all the test uh, enrolled students now doctor in the VST there is no sinusis and only when right to left it becomes from left to right then there is a sinusis which will develop lately what is paradoxical splitting normally how is second heart zone first to A2 then P2 if there is a right bundle branch block what will happen the p2 occur little more late so the widening of split will occur not paradoxical but left bundle branch block if it is there a2 becomes so delayed that instead of occurring before p2 it occur after a2 after p2 and that leads to paradoxical splitting is what need to be remembered now deviation of the trachea what is the clinical significance if there is a lobar consolidation or a generalized fibrosis or asthma there is no tracheal deviation but lobar collapse or a localized fibrosis towards that side there is a ipsilateral deviation pneumothorax effusion will push it contralateral deviation ok doc shoot me an answer what is the very good lamellar or blue dot then what is cataract in adults right right that is good so blue dot congenital cortical is adults is what need to be basically remembered now what happens in lobar pneumonia basically chest wall movement on that side get affected percussion note is dull breathing is bronchial vocal resonance is increased and there will be fine crackles entire clinical medicine in one paragraph means 
uh, a question of this nature. How do you identify consolidation? Agree, doc? That's right. We get the answer from Anantapur as blue dot and senile. Yes. Now, central cyanosis. Where do you see? Typically in fibrosing alveolitis due to hypoxia at the alveolar level, there is a cyanosis. Legionella pneumophila, what is the treatment? Erythromycin or rifampicin is a major part of the management. Oh, this is a very mean way of asking a question. Ecclesia lead to carcinoma esophagus but 10% cases. A daska tis bolte. 10%, 30% kind of questions, I don't think uh, mm, is the right way of judging people. But anyway, celiac disease, we find HLA B8 positivity. Dermatitis, hepatitis association, anti reticulin antibodies being present is what need to be remembered. Ulcerative colitis is more common in the women is important to be remembered. All differences between ulcerative colitis and Crohn's, you have to be 100% sure doctor. Then uh, you, if you look at extra GIT manifestations like uveitis, episcleritis, they are more common in the Crohn's than that of the ulcerative colitis. Is it supine film or erect film? to see fluid, air fluid levels, erect film. So that becomes wrong. Option C. Colorectal cancer have an association with FAP gene which is there on the uh, typically uh, chromosome 5. And the main treatment is surgery. But if it is a Duke's B and C tumor, chemo and radiotherapy are also indicated is what need to be remembered. In hepatitis B, there can be a minimal change glomerulonephritis. Uh, uh, the glomerulonephritis is membranous, not minimal change. That's fine. And... Uh, uh, Enecteric infections can lead to persistent infection and where do you see, how long you see HPS AG? It is seen in serum for 1 to 5 months after exposure. Envelope antigen is between 6 to 12 weeks and any persistent beyond 12 weeks is considered to be a state of chronic infection. In a vaccinated house surgeon, with hepatitis B, what you find is only anti-HPS antibodies, nothing else will be found, is what need to be remembered. 